Hey everyone, my name is Michael Dean. I wanted to share a video that shows this Miro space that I've built. Uh, so what I did is I captured all of the slides and all of the live sessions of building a second brain. And what's neat, neat is you have this ability to zoom in and out. So from this scale, you can see the whole course. Uh, you can zoom in and you can see the whole curriculum. And now it's the whole you know, para method, you can zoom in to just see the nature of what's inside of the notes. So it's a cool way to spatially map and understand all of this content. So my challenge right now is to make a 10 to 15 minute video, we'll see, to try and do a recap on the whole cohort 12 experience. So it's neat that you can see the team who made it possible, the whole community who was involved with it, and I think it's good to start at the context. These are the ideas that we were talking about before we started, and then also even the reflection we did at the very last live session. So three general points, there's this sense of information overload, and we need to learn how to navigate that. There's this idea that our perspective is this laser that lets us kind of decide what information do we capture and then distill and then create from. Um, and then there's this idea that this whole thing is really about moving our life in a very specific direction towards our vision. And then the last session was, I, I really love this slide where it shows this bottleneck of all of these different apps and sources. Um, and I think the idea is to, a second brain is this, you know, the, it's a whole framework of tools, right? That allow your it frees up your brain and lets it perform these higher functions like problem solving and creativity. So that's the context. And then code really is the framework that the whole curriculum was organized um, through. And so you have capture, which is bringing information in, organizing is where you place it, distilling is then at the note level, how do you summarize it? And then expression is about how do you take a series of notes combine them to then create something you can put into the world. So during the course, we cover one unit at a time, right? One column from left to right. And that's how each live session was organized. I think to switch things up, we could actually look at each row at a time. So you have the concept, the technique, and then the exercise. And I think by doing a recap from rows, we can actually start to see how all of these different ideas actually work together and have a relation to each other. So the reactivity loop is where we started. Um, it's about how information is always hitting us from every direction. And usually if we react to it, we get stuck in this loop. So there's this idea saying that by capturing it, we can assess, we can assess it later. We'll decide if it's important tomorrow or sometime later in the week. Then there's the idea of organizing for accountability. I really see this as prioritization. So once we've captured all of these things, we now have them on our plate in our inbox. Para is a way to say projects are things we're dealing with immediately. Areas are things we know that we're responsible for, but there's, there's no immediate urgency around it. Resources are interests and archive is, is the freezer. I thought this was a great metaphor where projects are stuff on the stove, area is the fridge, resource is the closet, archive is the freezer. And Tiago showed us that out of all of his notes, only 5% of them were active. So I think prioritization was the, my main takeaway here. And the idea is even when something is on the stove, right? The idea is over time, information shifts between the different parts of para. The third lesson on compression, um, I saw this as being about optimization, right? There's different ways you can build structure networks versus hierarchies, and the apps are always changing. But the idea here is to focus on the note instead. Um, and to, okay, usually notes are very long, right? And so by optimizing it, every time we touch it, the idea is the second time we return to it, we'll be able to more quickly understand it and its, its relevancy. Then return on attention. This is about the idea how there's usually this period of struggle, there's friction when we start, and then finally we get into a flow state, but it's never enough time to finish the entire project. There's always an interruption, 
or there's just a time limitation. So the idea is let's take this limitation and turn it to an opportunity. What if every time we sat down to work, we can create something that is reusable? So it's about modularity. And I think it's good to now look at all of these across, right? Because all of these principles, they're in response to information overload, but at a different scale, right? In this case, you have information overload in the world. In this case, you have so much that's in your second brain. How do we organize it? In this case, you can have sources that are extremely dense. You can be capturing full 10,000 word articles. You have too much information there. Um, and in this case, right, within a project, there's so many notes and small steps. How do we make sense of it? So there's kind of this overwhelming nature at all these different scales, but each of these is a strategy to how, how do we address it? Well, sorry, it's the concept around how we should address it. And now this next row, this is the technique. This is the workflow or the process that we should use to actually embody these concepts. And so there's this metaphor where I'm using navigation, right? Or, or just cities as a metaphor where I see the capture toolkit as kind of, this is where you have a centralized place for inspiration. This is kind of like fueling up. This is where your excitement comes from. And, and often the reason why you start projects or essays. Para is the navigation system. It's, it's, you know, it's the actual city layout. Right, it's your series of folders, and, and yes, they're organized by accountability. I think with search, it's almost like you can find any note scattered in the city. But within Para, you have these constellations of, of related notes. Progressive summarization. This is this is like signage. This is that every single note is a storefront. The idea is when you go into a note, you should construct a storefront that tells you what's inside. And so every time you come across it, you decide if you want to go in and shop for further detail or Instantly, you can just say, oh, I know right away. I don't need anything that's in there for this given project or essay. And then intermediate packets, this is like cargo. The idea is when you're starting a project, you're driving around the city and you're picking up all of these notes from past projects to use in, in an upcoming one. So I wanted to, in this case, go over the, that metaphor beforehand, and then we can dive into each one just in a little bit of detail. Um, in this case, there's all this information coming in. And the idea is regardless of the source, whether it's in social media um, or on your phone, or if you, if you just have a link, the idea is to create a centralized place where you have all of these kind of high value things that might be useful for you later. It's called a read later app and there's different tools you can use, but what they have in common is that you can filter, you can sort and you can highlight. Um, Para is this cross tool system. And the idea is stuff from Instapaper often end up in the inbox or even just your thoughts can end up in the inbox. This is about, you know, we talked about prioritization up here. This is where you filter a note into one of these four categories. Usually there's a list of folders, right? Within each category. And it really gives you this low friction way to discover things. So I thought it was neat to, to see an example project from Tiago where it was over a three year period. Um, I only had a few notes and it was kind of messy, but it's, it's a constellation of notes that, you know, you would never think to search for these things, but by having the project, you see everything related to, to something that's important in his life. Um, so then this third one, this is, I'm calling it instant relevance. Um, yeah, the idea is just, summarizing notes through bolding, through highlighting, and even putting summaries up top. And the idea is that through an instant glance, right, keep your notes glanceable, you understand what is in here. It's, it's that storefront or the signage storefront example where, you know, you, you get right away if you want to go in. And the idea is not every note can have a perfect storefront. Um, the, the, I think the, the principle is that every time you touch a note, make it slightly more refined than when you left it. So that it helps you in the future. And usually it's when you have a use case. So you're working on a project, you come across the note and that's when you progressively summarize it. Uh, it's not about saying every tool that goes through Instapaper, we're gonna make the perfect storefront. 
I think that's an important distinction. And then this last one, system synergy. Um, so the idea here is that you're, you're making these little packets and the packets don't just all combine to let you finish the project, but by being very conscious of the packet to the point where you could even share it and get feedback on it, the idea is that it's, it's compressed, it's high value, and it's reusable. So not only do you finish the project, but it actually gives you momentum on other projects. So that covers the technique section. And the last one here on the exercises, these are all kind of applied little, I don't want to say assignments, but thought experiments to, to help us understand the mindset that we need to properly put this whole thing in motion, right? So I think the 12 favorite problems is about curiosity. The project list is about scoping. Divergence and convergence is about mode. And then just-in-time retrieval is about process. So we'll go through each one quickly. Curiosity. So this is kind of in service of this idea of capturing, where it can be tempting to capture everything. Um, well, that's one extreme. And then the other extreme is maybe you don't even know where to start. Like, I want to write essays, but I don't know where to, to start bringing information in from. The idea is having this list of your curiosities can help both inspire and also limit. Um, and the idea is this list is evolving over time. Um, it, the idea is the more you learn about something, the more specific your questions can get. And in, in, in turn, to relate this to para, um, sometimes it's a good idea to have resources set up for the questions that you're trying to answer. Then with the project list, I think the angle here is scoping. All of these yellow posts at the bottom, this I think is also a potential weakness, right? It, maybe you're over curious or you're not sure what you're curious about. In this case, scoping is the potential weakness. Um, the most common problem is, is differentiating areas from projects. Um, I think the idea is that areas are these kind of long lasting, never ending facets of your life where projects have specific outcomes and deadlines. Um, and it's very important to pair these two together, right? If you have a project um, without a area or goal, then it's like a hobby, right? Whereas the opposite, if you have this dream with no next steps, then it's just this vision that never really gets clearer. Um, so it's really about the relation between projects and areas. With divergence and convergence, um, this is looking at the creative process and how there's this one mode of just play and boundless thinking and accepting any possible um, idea, which is very different from the editor mindset convergence. It's about cutting things out. It's about optimizing for clarity. Um, and so I think the idea here is knowing which mode you're in is really important when you're doing almost anything here. I mean, I guess, especially in terms of like, summarization and packets, right? There are some packets, for example, where you want to be, if you're making an outline or you want to just go through all of your notes um, and get as much ideas as possible, but you also want to set a cap on it and have a point where you start converging on the points in your outline. So just-in-time retrieval, this is the last one, and it, it gets into how we kick off and close projects, right? So this thing on the left and the right, I thought SOPs, standard operating procedures, that's kind of neat in the middle. It's all of these kind of repeatable things that you do across projects. But the main lesson here is that our second, we're, we're not doing projects in a vacuum, but in both phases, in the kickoff and the completion, we are very actively engaging with our second brain, right? So in the kickoff, there's this, Tiago went through these different steps, right? There's um, this act of searching for terms, right? For, for potential associations and links to a project. There's even going through para, through the projects, areas, and resources to, to find things. Um, I, I was really surprised by that demo on how divergent he was when he started a project. And it shows how, as you grow the second brain, you have more fuel that will help um, you know, shape a project. And I think there's the same kind of 
engagement at the completion phase or when you're done, you don't just throw out the project because all the hard work you did to get that done, if you don't integrate that stuff back into your second brain, then then it's over, right? Then then you build you you know you build it once and you used it once, but you can use those packets multiple times for future projects. So he showed examples on how, you know, for example, you can take testimonials or or notes from a call or just reviewing the, all the tasks you completed looking for opportunities to optimize them into SOPs. So yeah, it just showed how, I think this was a great way to bring it all together where it's like, once you do all of this and you have this functioning second brain, when you're in expression mode and you want to form new projects, so you have all of this fuel to you know get you started. So 15 minutes, perfect. This was, yeah, this was a, a, an amazing course, a really well-rounded way to look at the media landscape, our own information landscape, how we think about notes, and then how we become a little more process oriented around our efforts and link our second brain into it. All right, that's it. Bye, everybody.